Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Monday the 24th of January. Now, really quite a significant paper to report today. People that have had natural infection with SARS coronavirus 2 have got very high levels of ongoing immunity, protection against disease and protection against hospitalisation. So if someone's had the natural infection and then they're subsequently vaccinated, it really doesn't improve their level of protection. So people that have been infected then vaccinated versus people that have been infected and then not vaccinated, their levels of immunity are essentially the same. And this is really quite a profound uh, paper. It's, it's actually from the Centers for Disease Control and it's here in their weekly uh, magazine, the uh, Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report for the 19th of January. Now, as usual with the CDC, I find these, I don't know if it's just a cultural thing, but I find these remarkably difficult to read and decipher. So it takes me a long time. But I, I think I've worked out what this <laughs> what, what this paper is saying. So we'll... We'll delve into it. Now, what they did was they took a lot of data um, from California and from uh, New York. So that's where the data's from. So um, this, is the, uh, this is the reference here. Do check it for yourself. So using, using patients um, from California and New York. And uh, this is a big area. So, I mean, California alone, I believe, accounted for 18% of the population of the states. Now, what they did here is quite quite clever, really. They took four cohorts, four groups of people from those from those um, millions of people in those uh, two states, and they actually combined the data and they looked at the data separately. And we'll look at the data mostly separately for California and New York in this video. So, one cohort um, unvaccinated, no previous diagnosis, so people who had not been exposed to the virus via a vaccine antigen and people that had no previous diagnosis in other words they were completely naive to the virus they had no recognition of the virus at all because it's a new virus second group vaccinated with no previous diagnosis so these people were vaccinated but didn't have a diagnosis so they'd been vaccinated but hadn't got the natural infection in other words uh, next group unvaccinated with a previous diagnosis so these people were unvaccinated, but had a diagnosis. And this is the group here that they found to do remarkably well in terms of ongoing immunity and protection. Again, I've seen nothing of this in the mainstream media. These things that have got really profound import for what's going to happen over the next few months and what's happened over the past few years just seem to be completely ignored. I haven't seen this on the BBC. I haven't seen this on, on NBC. I haven't seen this anywhere. I'm, I might be wrong, but I haven't seen it. And I do monitor quite a few of the uh, the mainstream channels. And uh, fourth cohort, uh, vaccinated people with a previous diagnosis. So vaccinated with a previous diagnosis. In other words, they had the advantage of vaccination and the advantages of natural infection. Uh, so what happened to these people during Delta? Now, this actually was reported on. This data goes up to November the 30th, 2021. So important to realise this is pre-Omicron, but this is people who've had the natural uh, infection or, 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 or the first virus out of Wuhan, what we normally call the B11 virus strain, and people who'd had the alpha. How did they do in terms of protection from Delta is the question. Now, here's the first graphic that starts to answer this. Now, this one's from California. Now, this is a uh, laboratory incidents confirmed COVID-19 people that were diagnosed when they were hospitalized. So this is the risk of hospitalization. So twice the risk, four times the risk, six times the risk, eight times the risk, 10 times the risk, 12 times the risk of hospitalization. They don't actually say that, but that, that, that makes sense with what their figures are showing in the body of the paper for California. So first of all, this group here, unvaccinated and no previous diagnosis of COVID-19. So if someone's unvaccinated, no previous diagnosis, they are completely naive to the infection and therefore really quite at risk. So when Delta came along, a lot of those understandably were infected. And of course, it went up here and it went down there, just rising and falling with the way that the wave of the, um, the, the Delta wave went. So that's the start of the Delta wave there and it went up and that tells you what happened as they went along. But what we're looking at here is the risk. So these are people that are unvaccinated with no previous diagnosis of COVID-19, highly at risk. 
and this is adjusted via one thing that the CDC is really good at is its statistics. They've adjusted this for age and comorbidities. And as far as I understand that, they seem to have done it very well. I think they have a complete statistics department, so um, they are good at that. Now, so these people obviously at high risk of hospitalisation. Now, this, this next line here, let's just zoom into that. This is, this is un, that line there. So that solid blue line there, again, we can see massively lower risk, massively lower risk. This is people that are vaccinated with no diagnosis. So vaccinated with no diagnosis. So that's the protection from the vaccines there, at least in California. Then the line below that is uh, unvaccinated previous COVID-19 diagnosis. So in other words, people in this line here have only got natural infection. They haven't been vaccinated, but they have been exposed to the virus. And of course, it does vary slightly as time goes on. But the general trend there does continue. And then the final group there in the black in the black is a vaccinated previous COVID-19 diagnosis. So they vaccinate and they have previous COVID-19 diagnosis. But we see that these people do know better than the people that are unvaccinated. So for people that have had previous infection, whether they're vaccinated or not, the vaccination is not further reducing their risk of hospitalisation. This is the power of natural infection. Now, the CDC have not strayed into this territory before, but, but it's here now. So if you've had the natural infection, whether you get vaccinated or not, doesn't improve or reduce your risk of hospitalizations. It stays equally low. The only, the only people that had a slightly higher risk here of hospitalization were this group here with a vaccinated but no previous COVID-19 diagnosis. So that their risk was higher. So we see that the natural infection is given greater protection or slightly greater protection than vaccination if that vaccination is not accompanied by natural infection. Now this is data here from New York. We see it's on a different scale because this is looking at the risk of being positively diagnosed, whereas the California data that they chose to publish was looking at the risk of hospitalisation. So this is the risk of becoming a diagnosed case. And again, we see that people that are unvaccinated with no previous COVID-19 diagnosis by far most at risk. The next at-risk group was much less at risk, but that was vaccinated, no previous COVID-19 diagnosis. But right down here, unvaccinated people, previous COVID-19 diagnosis and vaccinated people with a previous COVID-19 diagnosis. So we see by far the lowest risk here. And I think you'd have to say these lines essentially overlap. These people are by far the lowest risk, whether or not they've been vaccinated, if they have had previous COVID-19 infection. So we can now put our cohorts in order. Results starting with the most at risk going down to the least at risk. So the most at risk are people that are unvaccinated with no previous diagnosis. So this shows it has been a good idea in the past to get vaccinated because you don't want to be exposed to this virus with no cover from vaccine and no cover from previous infection. Next at risk, uh, vaccinated with no previous diagnosis. So people that were vaccinated with no previous diagnosis were second most at risk. So they were most at risk. They were second most at risk. And really, we could see, say, equally low risk for these two. So, so the, these are third and fourth together, We're not in really in any particular order, um, because the data is not that. They're the, the basically the same. The data is very, very similar. This is unvaccinated with previous diagnosis and vaccinated with previous diagnosis indicating that vaccination doesn't really make any difference to the risk of hospitalisation if you've had previous infection. It's quite a profound, quite a profound statement, this really. Is this data valid? Uh, well, unvaccinated with no previous uh, COVID-19 diagnosis. So how many people were actually unvaccinated? Well, in California, it was 18 percent and in New York, it was 18.4 percent. So we can see it's going to be several million people in each cohort so i'm really happy to say that that data is is very is the most valid data we've had published on this so far conclusion to draw from this natural immunity with or without vaccine provides robust protection against hospitalization in the age of delta 
we can say that for sure. We will be talking in a minute about the relative risk. Of course, now we are in the age of Omicron. Um, just note here, the people who died uh, had no risk of reinfection. So obviously the people that were left alive who'd, uh, who'd survived this, uh, th th they're the ones that are left to tell the tale. So we don't want to use this to say that the vaccines were no good at the time. The vaccines did save a lot of lives at the time because this is, this is by virtue of the fact that this is data of those that survived. Um, so this data is about those who survived the infection. So questions. If I've not been vaccinated or infected, should I seek out natural exposure? Well, clearly we know that if you haven't been vaccinated or infected, your risk of hospitalisation, your risk of catching the disease is increased. Your risk of hospitalisation is increased as well. Um, so that will be a very dangerous thing to do. So if you haven't been vaccinated or infected, you should not seek out natural exposure. Absolutely not. You should get vaccinated first to greatly reduce your risks of when you are naturally exposed. Would some higher risk groups still benefit from subsequent vaccination? Well, the answer to that is probably yes, but we don't know that for sure. The data doesn't show us that. So this applies to the whole population. Are there some particular groups that could be selected for third or even fourth doses? Well, we know there are actually because some people are immunosuppressed. So the answer to that really is yes, but they need to be selected on an individualized basis. Is there still an advantage in younger people getting boosted if they've had an infection? Well, in terms of protection against hospitalisation, the answer to that is it would appear not, wouldn't it? It would appear not. So is this whole booster programme that we're doing in the younger age groups going to keep more people out of hospital? Uh, from this information, it would appear not. And this is data driven. This is data driven. Professor Clancy yesterday, I hope, did you get the chance to watch that video yesterday with Professor Robert Clancy? Amazing, amazing science, amazing guy. Do, do try and watch that if you possibly can. And uh, he, he was making the, this very point that people panicked into boosters rather than going by data of hospitalisation. But an, another point from the professor's talk in a minute. Um, is there still an advantage in young people getting boosted if they've uh, not had the infection well if they've not had the infection then it becomes slightly more ambiguous and this data doesn't actually uh, answer that do we need to change the one size fits all recommendations uh, let me think about that of course we do um, the idea that we're saying booster doses for everyone rather than selecting people is just just doesn't make any sense we need to be much more selective about what we're doing not just treat the whole population as a whole should there be a modified vaccine recommendations for those who've been infected? Well, clearly the answer to that is yes, because it completely changes the risk benefit dynamic. Completely changes that. Um, is it worth getting uh, antibody checks to membrane protein, envelope protein, nuclear capsid protein? And in other words, getting an antibody test to tell us if we've had the natural infection or not. See, at the moment, we're not doing that. At the moment, we're saying get back vaccinated, whether you know you've been infected, whether you don't know that you're infected, whether you've got antibodies, whether you don't know you've got antibodies. We're just we're just doing mass booster campaigns uh, completely blind at the moment. This is the policies that we're adopting. Whereas if we knew that someone who had the natural immunity because they had M protein antibodies, E protein antibodies or N protein antibodies, then that would greatly change the risk benefit analysis because we know that the vaccination after they've had the natural infection is not going to improve their chances of keeping out of hospital. So the answer to that is absolutely yes. And again, we saw, we saw this yesterday when we were interviewing Dr. Cohen. He, he, he frequently orders these tests. So he knows if people have been positively diagnosed and it also allows him to make a differential diagnosis because just someone, because someone's reporting respiratory symptoms in this age of Omicron does not automatically mean that it is sars coronavirus 2 Omicron. So yeah, yeah, we absolutely need to start doing antibody tests. So if someone tests positive for antibodies, meaning they've had natural infection, they don't have particular com uh, comorbidities, then why would you want to give them a booster dose of vaccine? Because it's not improving their chances of keeping out of hospital and, and making virtually no difference to the chances of getting infected anyway. 
Um, how well th this wild type, so this was the wild type immunity and the alpha induced immunity from these previous waves that protected against Delta. How will this work in the age of Omicron? Well, the answer to that question is we don't know. But again, if you watch Professor Clancy's video from yesterday, we learnt about the uh, the mucous membrane sort of compartment for immunity, that there are specific cells and specific antibodies in the nose, in the mouth, in the pharynx, in all of the airways that are protecting us against the virus. And of course, if you actually are exposed to the virus by breathing it in, for example, by breathing in Omicron, that will greatly stimulate this mucosal level of immunity as well as stimulating systemic immunity as well because we swallow some of the virus that goes into the intestine into these pears patches into this um, immunological uh, lymphoid tissue in the gastrointestinal tract and from there it can go all around the body which i only learned yesterday <laughs> but so in other words exposure of the virus in the mucus gives us extra mucus mucosal protection which is great but for me at the moment being protected from um, severe disease by uh, two vaccines and a booster dose of the vaccine I think I would get much longer protection uh, levels of protection for longer if I was exposed to the Omicron which would give me the mucosal protection and give me the systemic protection I can't make that recommendation for you I'm just saying that would uh, I believe that would apply to me and of course the other thing this data doesn't give this only goes up to the end of uh, November 2021 and it may well be that the natural immunity has much greater longevity than the vaccine acquired immunity. And there's already intimations that that could be the case. So where does this leave us, given that everyone is now being infected with Omicron and everyone is now being infected with Omicron, meaning they're going to get immunity in their mucosal uh, compartment, meaning they're going to get immunity systemically. So that that's doubly good. Everyone's getting infected with it. Um, we, we now know that at least with the, the B11, the wild type, and with the alpha, that produced good levels of immunity. Is there any reason at all why this exposure to Omicron won't provide equally good levels of immunity? I don't think there's any reason at all why it shouldn't, and I fully expect that it will provide equally good levels of immunity. But of course, we don't actually know that yet because this this data is not there so yes i believe that this is going this is really good news for omicron but in absolute scientific terms i don't know i would say from what we know so far it's likely this is going to provide really good levels of herd immunity from omicron against omicron and we know that omicron already provides back protection against delta which is one of the reasons that delta disappeared so i think this looks remarkably promising for herd immunity and uh, basically the fact that this virus is going to become endemic and for most of us uh, we can just get on with living life as normal the the proviso is people at particularly high risk that this doesn't really answer the question on so people at high risk certainly need to have their antibodies tested to see if they've had the virus if they've had the virus and survived it that's really good news because we now know that's going to give them uh, enhanced levels of immunity so natural infection looking really good and that's really uh, very, very good news. Now, uh, just before we finish, a quick uh, look at what Bafaf is up to in our uh, partner community health project in Uganda. HIV is another pandemic, of course, human immunodeficiency virus. Um, one to two million people, probably nearer two million people, still infected every year. Uh, 40 million at least living with the virus. So let's have a look at uh, Rafafa going to the villages and giving community health uh, advice. So um, let's, uh, let's watch that now. Uh, so friends, I started by asking them what they knew about HIV stroke 8. And they gave me several responses, uh, which included an HIV being a disease that doesn't heal and that is very dangerous so after them giving me what they knew about HIV I also started explaining to them uh, what HIV means and how it can be spread from one person to another and then I also talked about the myths that are surrounding uh, the spread of HIV Uh, so I told them that the HIV is spread from one person to another uh, 
through several ways, which include having unprotected sexual intercourse with a person who is having HIV, uh, who is having HIV infection. And then uh, I talked about sharing of sharps like razor blades, needles, and then also I told them it can be spread from mother to the baby, uh, maybe during breastfeeding or even during uh, childbirth, most especially if the birth is conducted from home, uh, like most of the people in our communities are still doing. So uh, most people still uh, produce from home which is very dangerous because they use bare hands and they don't have sterile instruments. So in such a way, there is a risk. And that's why we need to keep sensitizing people to make sure that uh, they don't get this virus. As I told you, I also talked about the myths surrounding HIV, like uh, they believe that if you share a plate with someone who has HIV, you can also get HIV because in some homes, uh, children who have HIV, uh, they separate for them cups and, you know, plates and that causes stigma in them and it affects them, of course, psychologically. So I talked about uh, that and then uh, the idea that maybe when you greet that person who has HIV, you may also get it, or when you hug that person, and many other myths that are surrounding this disease. And in that shortest moment, uh, people learned a lot of things. I also got a chance of uh, checking on Ben, and we took for him some things for using Otherwise, everything went on well. Uh, I thank you all for watching and thank you for uh, subscribing, liking, and always sharing our videos. I love you all. See you in the next video. I'm going out into the world Taking hope to the hopeless and the needy God will guide me unto the end If you don't mind, please come and go with me I'm going out Excellent, Rafafa. Thank you uh, very much for that. Um, if you listen to Rafafa's songs a couple of times, they are strangely addictive. <laughs> they really are. And he writes them and plays them all himself. So that's great. So it's it's amazing all the things that we now just think are common knowledge in Western countries, like how you get HIV and importantly, how you don't get HIV from normal social contact. You don't get HIV from hugging someone. Um these things are all so important to know and that you can get HIV from sharing razor blades as well as the obvious uh, the, the sexual transmission. So um, really important uh, primary health education, prevention is better than cure. And HIV, of course, is really still very, very common in, in Uganda. So um, interesting. I'll put the original link to Wafafa's uh, video. And the reason that Wafafa is able to spend all this time doing this is because a lot of you have made donations to his work so we'll put a link on there as well um and i know quite a few of you are following it do do subscribe to his channel he needs a few more subscribers he's struggling a bit so <laughs> so that's us for today um natural immunity i think is the way to go and as well as that of course we looked we looked yesterday um again from professor clancy's work uh, showing that the repeated vaccination can actually stimulate the suppressor cells and actually uh, reduce the amount of vaccination that subsequent doses of vaccine are uh, the, the, the amount of immunity that subsequent doses of vaccine will give so even even if it were advanced even if it were 
logistically possible to carry on vaccinating people every few months um we know that's not going to enhance the level of uh, protection after the sort of after the third booster dose essentially from what you said yesterday and we now know that natural immunity works and i believe is the way to go so um thank you for watching <laughs>